Good afternoon and certainly a privilege to be with you and uh, 
I've never been to this fairgrounds before, but what a very uh, beautiful fairgrounds and obviously very nice here in the ring. So uh, we're looking forward to a good day. I brought my, uh, my chaperone with me, my daughter, my 10 year old daughter, wave your hand, Brecken up there on, on the stand. So if anybody has any complaints, that's my complaint department up there. She'll filter them to me. But uh, she might come out here a little bit, maybe when we pick grand. Uh, you know, sometimes uh, you see judges, they take their kids with them. She's got a real interest in it. And I'm not going to have her judge the whole show with me, but I might have her come out here for, for a, a class or two. But she's actually going to volleyball camp at Purdue tomorrow. So uh, she rode over here with me. But uh, it's a nice way to start off our show, uh, showmanship here at the beginning in a, in a beginner group. And I just visited with the kids about a, a couple things that they uh, probably, uh, you know, in my opinion, should know. But uh, not ever is my intent to turn showmanship into a quiz bowl. And, uh, you know, I think they need to have some knowledge about their project, but it's about the mechanics and how they work themselves out here in the ring. And uh, they're doing a good job. Uh, you know, there's a very, very subjective about what you like when you judge showmanship. You know, how you're taught at home is, is what you need to do. And, and don't let a, an overweight judging coach tell you how you need to show your cattle. So, um, you know, as they come out here, I just try to, the things that, from a mechanic standpoint, I think as you watch and in terms of pulling the animals into place and, and doing a good job of keeping them set up at all times. I think we've got one individual out here that suits me uh, real well, not to take anything away from the rest, but just does a, a really good job of being uh, very thorough in terms of getting things done in a timely manner, really good in terms of their ring awareness and presence. I think a very excellent showman. This young man up here in the front is going to be our champion, beginner showman. Congratulations to him. I thought he just uh, did a really good job in terms of knowing where he needed to be and pulling his effort into place and then did a good job uh, discussing the questions with me as well. I think it probably gets just a shade closer as you look at making a reserve champion in this uh, particular division. I, I think there's probably a couple different ways you can go. I thought one of them maybe started off a little stronger and then faded a little bit on us. And uh, I thought one that we've had that's probably hung in here just a little more as we go on down the line. I think it's close between the two of them, but the one I like second best is this young man with the chocolate heifer right here. He's gonna be our reserve. Let's give them all a nice round of applause. They head back, I know we'll see them later, but they did a good job. Here's we start off in our beginner showmanship.
Class, uh, we've got a subclass and then a, another subclass after this, and then we'll bring them back to pick a champion overall. So, uh, you know, I think these three young uh, ladies all do a very nice job. I think uh, very knowledgeable about their projects, but yet are still, in terms of the mechanics, do a good job. You know, probably some slight differences, I think, as we get up on the top end. Uh, and the two, I'm going to actually ask the two young ladies up in the front to come back. Not take anything away from the young lady with the steer, just maybe a little quicker to the draw uh, on these two heifers. But I think both of them do a good job. You know, I think in showmanship, it's always better to keep a few more because you don't know what you have coming. I think both these young ladies are certainly deserving to come back for our champion selection. So let's give all three of them a nice round of applause, if you would. We'll ask these front two to come back here after this next class for our championship.
Competitive class here, and uh, I think all five of these are doing a good job. And uh, you know, again, sometimes uh, when it comes to showmanship, it takes two to tango, and your dance partner has to want to come and participate. And the young lady's battling with that heifer there next to the end. The heifer's just uh, not cooperating too much, but she's doing a good job hanging in there. And then with that, I think you know, as you take that into consideration, that kind of can disrupt things around as well. It's nobody's fault. Uh, when I was eight years old, I broke my leg showing cattle in Kansas City uh, to no fault of mine or my heifer. Uh, so, you know, you kind of have to just be cognizant of those things. I think with that, we're going to ask three of them to come back here for our championship. The young lady in the back with the steer, the young lady with the uh, Holstein steer, and the young lady with this Hereford heifer up in the front. Uh, we're going to ask all three of them to come back for our champion selection. Uh, again, yeah, let's give them a nice round of applause, and we'll keep rolling along here, but another very competitive class.
Give these a good round of applause, if you would, please. You know, showmanship uh, to me is one of the more interesting things that you judge because, as you, as a judge or as a parent or whatever, as a coach, I see a lot of different things. So it's, a lot of times you got parents around ringside who look like air traffic controllers. You know, they're giving all kinds of signals and all that. Well, it distracts the kid. You know, most of the time the kid's doing pretty good, and. Uh, I've got a 10-year-old up there who is pretty defiant and uh, she really doesn't even look at her mom and I anymore because she's pretty sure she knows more than us. But generally, that's a pretty good rule of thumb. The kid knows more than the parent uh, because they're actually out there and, and they can kind of have a feel for it. And that's what we see on these five. They've got a pretty good feel for the ring and uh, they got a pretty good feel to know where I'm at and kind of, you know, what their animal needs to do uh, maybe a little better or uh, could... Uh, you know, what, what their animal's doing right. So, uh, you know, I probably, when, when Brecken was little, uh, I probably was a little more animated on the sidelines than what I am now, but I often, as a judge, get a kick out of it. As we start to climb the ladder in age, you know, you get, uh, even as we go to the next level, or next age division, uh, we still got them that are trying to tell them how to show. So I, I it doesn't bother me, I just, I, I find it funny uh, because you know, these kids can pretty much stand on their own, whether it's in sports or, you know, somebody's harassing the referee or whatever it is. But this is a really good group of showmen. You can see they got the mechanics down. They've got the, the wherewithal to know where I'm at, yet they're good in terms of their spacing. Um, this is kind of a long rectangular ring. Not always are you going to show in a ring like this. So how you navigate that, especially when you're starting to turn on the walks, those are all things that they learn and do it. Very few people can do it without practice, and you can tell that these have, I would assume, have put the work in at home, and uh, so I appreciate that. As you get out here to pick a champion, you know, again, it comes down to personal preference on what you like. Uh, not only is that how it will be in the show, it's personal preference, but probably even more so in showmanship because everybody has different tactics, and I'm cognizant of that fact. But as we went through the classes and we went through uh, uh, in terms of describing the type of a showman that I like, the one that suits me best comes out of this, uh, this young lady standing back here on the end. She does a very good job. Congratulations to her. She wasn't just spot on maybe on a couple of her questions, but again, I tend to give a little leeway on that. As a college professor, I realize everybody's not going to get a straight A on their test, uh, even though we want them to. So she did a good job. I thought in terms of mechanics and the way she handled her heifer was probably as good as we had out here. I think it may be, again, still very competitive as we go down through the line of what you want to do. I guess the other one that just in terms of uh, uh, feet placement, in terms of the mechanics of doing the things that, that I like, I think mirrors our champion very well. The young lady that came out of that class with her is going to be the reserve. Let's give all five of them a good round of applause. Very, very competitive group of showmen.
Andrew Sherman. Let's give them a nice hand. They did a very, very nice job, I thought. Probably from top to bottom, maybe as knowledgeable as we've had. And you'd expect that as you start to climb the ladder in age. Uh, just very knowledgeable uh, about their projects. I thought did a good job of answering the questions. Then as you get down to the mechanics of things, of who that we want to bring back uh, as we get to our final. I'm going to keep three of them out of here. The two young people up here in front, this uh, snip note, or this baldy heifer young uh, man here with the, with the red heifer, and then this young lady circling right here. We're going to ask all three of them to come back for our finals, but I think a, a very, very good division all the way through. Yeah, give them, a, give them a nice hand. They're very well deserved. We'll see how they stack up as we get them back out here, but good job to these kids.
the senior drive. But again, let's congratulate these kids, if you would, with a good hand. They put in a good effort. Really nice job uh, to all of them. And again, as I visited with them and I asked them some questions, you know, they were really spot on, I thought, in terms of the answers that they gave. And I give kind of questions that are a little more open-ended and a little more interpretory and just from their standpoint, uh, doesn't necessarily have a right or a wrong answer. But I think the, one of the bigger things for me is having some conviction, being able to look someone in the eye and kind of just visit with them and yet uh, have, having some speaking ability. You know, obviously the answer has some value, but, but not too much. I think it's just more important that they, they have some general knowledge. I think as you get out here, you know, again, it's close calls, just depending on what you see. You have to understand, I'm looking at them for 10 minutes in a show ring, but that's why showmanship is so important. You really only get that one chance to make a first impression, uh, especially uh, when you're showing livestock. So it's so important to have them looking as good as you can at all times. So. I think it's very, very competitive out here. I'm going to ask two of them to come back in this particular lineup. Young man with the white switch steer that's got white socks and the young man right behind him. I'm going to ask both of them to come back for our champion lineup. But again, a, a very good group. Congratulations to these kids. selection before we start into the cattle show and just a, a really good group here of seniors and uh, you know, I could tell from the first class today we've got some really very competitive cattle exhibitors uh, in this county and they do a very very good job and the, you know to me it just kind of comes down to personal preference and showmanship uh, you know again that some of these cattle have been in the ring now twice and they're starting to know where maybe some of the holes are and uh, you know getting a little more antsy but they're doing a good job these kids are out here we're just lucky we got such a nice day because, uh, you know, starting the show at 1 o'clock when they called uh, a month or two ago to, to hire me, I thought, boy, it could get a little warm, but uh, it's just we're really lucky we got such a nice, nice day. Um, just the one thing I wanted to hit on, I got my daughter bringing me the mic. I was uh, two weeks ago, I was in Mercedes, Texas, which is right at the tip down there on the right by Mexico, judging the Brahman Junior National. And uh, I don't know if any of you ever had gout before, but I had gout in my right foot. 
the most painful thing. It felt like somebody took a sledgehammer and beat my foot into the ground. So I usually wear boots and I got shoes on, so I apologize for that. And she's gonna save me a few steps by bringing me that mic. I'm, I'm on the men, but I had a thousand head of Brahmins to judge with a bad foot. So not, not probably one of my best ideas that I've had. So she's gonna bring me the mic to save me a few steps and then she'll try to give me her opinion, but uh, I don't know that I'll always listen to her, but uh, it's kind of how her, I have to treat her mother sometimes too. But uh, this is a, a, a really good set of showmen. And I mean, they're very, very competitive as to what they do. Uh, this just, you know, some people are given ability, whether it, you know, Michael Jordan had the ability to play basketball. I was definitely too short and not athletic to play basketball, so I chose livestock judging. For these kids, it might be showing cattle. By the looks of some of the talent that they have, I think it's a pretty natural ability for them. The one that, the, we're gonna name our champion, the one that suits me the best, I think is just really calm, really collected, never saw him miss a step out here. That's this young man with this stock and footed steer. He's gonna be our champion. Congratulations to him. This young lady right in front of him here with this black hairy heifer is gonna be our reserve. Excellent group of showmen here. Let's give them all a good hand and we'll get on with the show. Mm-hmm. 
Brought the uh, reinforcements or the big guns in to help me with this. Uh, it's a nice deal, though. These kids are uh, uh, doing a really good job out here. Brecken and I went through and visited with each one of them, and uh, you know they got there's some nice projects out here. I think the future is sure bright for your county. I think it's in good hands with these younger generation here. Uh, there's some fierce competitors out here. As you talk to them, uh, they definitely got that will and that desire that you look for and something that I really appreciate in today's day and age. So let's give them all a nice hand. It's a good deal for them to get to come out here, and I appreciate them. Uh, uh, we had that one young lady had a little hiccup, but she dusted herself right up and got out here and uh, did what she needed to do. So all of them did a good job. My congratulations to them. Good job, guys.
Another excellent group of these kiddos here. Let's give them a good hand. Uh, they're doing an excellent job. Uh, our calf weight to our showman weight ratio is uh, probably not as strong as what we've had in some of the other uh, classes, but they're doing a, a really good job of motoring these calves through here. And Brecken and I went through and talked to them. And again, like we talked about in the last class, future sure bright. Looks like you got some colorful personalities in these kids and they're doing an excellent job. So our congratulations to them. Uh, we'll keep kind of rolling along here, but uh, as they exit again, let's put our hands together for them and show them our appreciation. They did a whale of a job. Another single entry effort here. She's a little antsy, so we'll get her out, out of here and maybe in here with another effort. It's kind of a nice pattern to this female. Really extended up through her front end. I like the length of side that's up her head. Get on top of her, some upper turns or a rib cage, spread out of her hip. Uh, she's maybe just a little tip off of her rear leg and off through her front end in terms of her, of her knee step. And we'll see how she's settled in when she relaxes out here. But a nice effort, very fresh. Very well presented. Some nice up through a front end. That's a quality beam up again right here about two. Congratulations, sir.
nice and positive effort here as the young man brings to you. Really a flexible lead round. I feel like the reach and agility that she has off both ends of her framework. Really nice body to this effort as well. Her volume is good. Sometimes she'll be able to maintain herself to get her out into production. You know, she's one that's probably not as trendy neck as what some prefer, but I think that'll melt off of the first. That really doesn't bother me a whole lot. I just like her doability. Her range of motion is good. Yet her body style sure looks like a cow, and she looks very maternal in terms of her makeup. So nice female for this young man. I think we're going to put her against the, the Charlet and send one of them to the Grand Drive. But it's going to be a, a, a very competitive placing. It's a nice female that the young man brings to us. Cattle here in our Charlotte and Charlotte influenced uh, championship. Uh, the, the purebred heifer is one that's very muscular and powerful, like you'd expect and come to expect from that breed. Really opened up as you study her on the top side of her skeleton, out of her hip, and her upper rib cage is good. We talked about a nice look to that heifer. She's probably a little tidier in her chest. You know, where you sit on her from a movement perspective is probably where you're going to make your decision here. I'd like to relax her in her front end, loosen her up just a little bit off of her rear leg. The influence heifer there is one that's really deep and really cowy and maternal in her design. Really good set of feet and legs and running gear underneath this heifer. You know, again, she's not as tidy in her chest floor, probably not as powerful as the heifer right in front of her, but a lot of doability to this female. I like the flexibility that she's got. Set and construction of her hind leg is good. So that's kind of a apples and oranges here from a comparison standpoint. A couple different kinds. I guess for me, the, the one that suits me a little better in terms of mobility and reach off both ends, still being real cowy in her design. I like the young man's uh, orange heifer to be our champion, and the white heifer will be our reserve.
testing class here, a little bit of different type and kind all the way down the line. Uh, Heifer that wins the class, I just think has the most uh, positives from a boldness perspective. She's really a wide base, dimensional kind of a female that's got some springer rib and some volume. I'd be the first to admit I'd have to clean up the crest of her neck and maybe just to make her a little more ladylike about her head and her neck and her chest. But I think just in terms of when you weigh totals and positives, she's the one who puts the most good things together in the class. Pretty functional heifer to come in second, doesn't blow you away with any extras, but I think as you start to melt her down, she's a solid structured heifer, has some rib and some flank in her and still nice up through her front end. Runs out of horsepower in relation to the heifer that leads off the class, but still, to me, a little more useful in her kind. The baldy heifer that comes in third, I like, just has a little more uh, softness, a little more melanous of body. I'd like to loosen her up off of her hind leg in relation to those top two cattle, a little straighter in her hock. We just need to make her a little more limber on the go. And the brockle face heifer that closed the class, a little tidier up front. I like the length and extension that she has as you study her from the profile. She's the emptiest middle heifer we have in the class. I like to soften her up in her flank and just give her a little more mass in relation to those heifers on up the line. Interesting group there in the key show. Way to start off our Herford show in October fall gap here. Really well balanced. I like the symmetry and the quality that the pepper shows us. Got a nice instruction to her high leg. She's big footed. Really like the stoutness of feature that she has as well. Patterned up so good from the side that one that I think certainly has a lot of presence about her. Well, she, she stacked up against the other Herfords in competition, but a nice way to start off in a single entry fall ball class. Go born April heifer here, one that's got some flexibility. I like the reach that she has off both ends of her framework. A heifer that's got some extra length of body to her as well. And some extension as you study her all the way through. I give her around behind her. She's got some spread in her pins and down in through her base. I like that about her as well. Maybe doesn't have uh, quite the look from the side, but still I think functional enough in terms of her type and kind. So nice heifer for the young man. We'll see how she stacks up against our other two class winners here in our three hit single entries of these herfers. But nice heifer here in the middle class.
pair of heifers in this class. Uh, the dark red heifer to me just has a little more substance and strength. As you uh, get into this one, uh, just in terms of bulk and mass and spread in relation to the heifer that comes right behind her. Yet with that, I think she profiles just a little nicer uh, from the side, has a little more balance and eye appeal to her as well. The yellow heifer that comes in second, I certainly like the look she has up front, tucked up in nice in her chest floor and still feminine about her head and her neck. She gets a little stiffer off of her rear leg and doesn't have quite the dimension or substance as you take her to the ground as the heifer that leads off the class, but still very useful in terms of her type and kind. A couple single entries, then a class of two, but good quality, I thought, all the way through. As we get them back out here, I think there's a heifer that you sure need to land on just in terms of having some stoutness, having some look, having some presence as you study her from the side. A female that certainly has nice body shape as well and certainly a nice uh, rig from a uh, condition perspective. I like this fall heifer here to be our champion herfer. Congratulations, this young lady. Single entry in that class, and then as we come back out here, I still I think there's another heifer to follow her that sure has some substance and some strength to her. You know, maybe not quite as opened up in the lower part of her body as the heifer we end up winning, but it is a little wider based. I like her heaviness and structure. That young lady's heifer that won the last class is going to be our reserve heifer. Good job, buddy. But a high quality heifer, a lot of body, a lot of mass and broodiness to this female, but yet still one that's elegant as you study her all the way through. I like the heaviness of structure this female has. Good footed, uh, spread down there, down low is good, nice body shape. You know, she might break just a little bit right behind her shoulder, but that doesn't really bother me. Uh, she's very, very flexible as she goes. I think that'll fill in as you get some maturity and probably feed this heifer. That's a very, very nice one who strikes a good look from the side, has some extra intangibles of power and stoutness. Good female here in the limousine show.
This main uh, tainer show, a really well balanced, very attractive heifer that's good bodied and nicely presented. Still the right kind of look to me up through her front end. You know, she's not chisel neck, but got a real cowy look about her and some presence. Like the volume and the mass, but yet I really like the way this heifer travels and scoots off both ends of her framework. A female that's got a nice hind leg, good slope and angle to her shoulder. I think that's just a real useful, high quality female. So we'll see how she stacks up as we continue through the breeds here, but very nice heifer for the young lady. Interesting pair of heifers here and some contrasting differences uh, between the two. Uh, I'm going to use a little bolder made heifer who's a little wider as you study her all the way through. Uh, she's got a little more spring of rib and dimension to her. To me, her decided advantage comes structurally as you study her off of her front end, the way her knee sits onto her body, the way she consumes ground with her hind leg to me is just a notch better. She wants to get maybe just a little tighter in her top. She's probably just a little thicker about her neck, but I still think that heifer, in terms of flexibility and doability, has an advantage. This heifer sure paints a nice picture from the side. I like the femininity and refinement that she has up through her front end. She's a long-bodied female as well. She gets in a little trouble for me when you set the cattle in motion. Gets a little wide off of her front end. I'd like to change the set of her lower shoulder and her knee. I'd like to see her just reach a little further off either end of her skeleton. But I like this heifer's design. I like her presence from the side. Just need to change her a bit structurally. But interesting pair of heifers here in class two.
Good ladies, Baldy Heifer we used to lead off this class. Really a bold sprung, big ribbed kind of a female. A lot of stoutness and power to her, and yet with that, I still think handles herself pretty good on her feet and legs. Uh, a heifer that's got some flexibility and some reach to her. I still like the clearance she has at her hock and the spread at her pins. Heifer that comes in second, I like the refinement and the femininity and the attractiveness this heifer has. She kind of runs out of gas and horsepower in relation to the heifer that leads off the class. A little flatter in her rib design, maybe a little more snug in her fore rib. But I like her flexibility. She uses her hind leg well. She's got uh, good angles to her skeleton. Just need to see a little more of that heifer in relation to the female that leads off. Very competitive group of these maintainer females here in three good classes. Uh, I think as we go all the way through, still pretty logical for me though to find this heifer up in the front. It's going to lead off this breed. This is a good female. Like her moderation, like her softness, like her construction. Yet a female that blends together really nice from the side. Nice heifer that this young lady has that's going to be our champion. Congratulations to her. Here's a single entry and uh, again I think it's close between these two heifers as you look at Picking a reserve, uh, they're very similar in terms of being bold, being stout featured cattle that got some substance to them. I like those things about them. I think one of them is probably just a little wider made. I think one of them is probably maybe just a, a little smoother in terms of the way her muscle pattern sits onto her skeleton. So, you know, again, I think you could go either way. You could probably tweak both these heifers in an area or two. I, I guess the one that suits me second best when you start just weighing the totals and weighing the positives and putting all the things together, I like the heifer out of class two to be our reserve today. It's really sleek in her design. I like the look and the eye appeal this heifer gives us. She's really smooth in terms of her pattern. I like the reach she has off both ends and the build that she's got. She's still ample in terms of the width, but still a very fresh conditioned heifer. It's got a nice presence about her. So a lot of quality to that female. Really like the upheadedness and the trackedness that she gives us. Still a good rib cage in this heifer with the one that's uh, in the right kind of rig from a condition standpoint. So nice female for the young lady. She, she stacks up against our other uh, single entry in this Shorthorn Plus breed, but quality heifer. Congratulations to you.
Another quality single entry here. This red heifer sure straight and strong in her top line. I like her from hooks to pins. In terms of the levelness she has out of her hip, still pretty stout featured heifer as well as you take her to the ground. Foot shape looks good and so does flexibility. Still nice up through her front end. You know, she maybe doesn't have as much to her, uh, but I still think adequate in that regard. Starting to kind of look like a cow as you study her all the way through. I just think a useful kind of a female that should make this young man money as you get her into production. Nice solid heifer here. Congratulations to him. Plus show. I think both of them have good things about them and things that should uh, allow them to be very good producers for these young people. There's one of them that's probably just a little more stylish uh, in terms of her look, probably has a little more to her in terms of body mass, but I think both these cattle are, are functional at the ground, they're both flexible, they both got the right parts and pieces, I think they can go on and do good things for both these young people. The black heifer is going to be our champion today. The red heifer is going to be reserved, but a good pair of short horn plus females. Congratulations to both these kids. brings to us really bold in her body design like the way she couples out of her shoulder into her heart real expansive in her forerib 
Looks like she's going to be able to maintain herself well as you get her in production with not a lot of supplemental maintenance because the heifer's moderate, really got a nice rib cage in her. Might want to uh, change her hind leg just a little bit. She'll camp out and close up just a notch more, but really like the doability, the volume, and the mass this heifer portrays in terms of her rib and her power. Nice heifer. Real roomy middle heifer here. This is another single entry, real moderate in her frame size. Again, going to be easy keeping. Uh, one that's real uniform from her fore rib into her flank. You like the proportionality this heifer shows you from the side. You know, not as much of her maybe in relation from a weight per day of age standpoint, but I sort of like the softness of rib. I like the extra moderation that she's got. And still pretty well constructed as you take her in terms of her movement been cleaning her joints. So another solid heifer here. Again, we'll see how she stacks up against her contemporaries, but quality heifer for the young man. Good job. Maybe here, I think you got three good heifers, but you could make a justification to do, uh, I think, some different things in here. And as you get them back out here, I thought there was one that, from a flexibility perspective and having still a nice enough look from the side, probably set the standard. You got a couple of them that are maybe a little bolder in terms of the way that they're made, but do they move just quite as athletically as the heifer that we're going to end up using? I'm not sure. So I think there's some give and take. If I was going to take one home, the one that suits me just from a length perspective, still having some femininity, still having the right kind of running gear from a flexibility standpoint. Wasn't blessed with quite as much hair, but I think to me she's the best one. I like this heifer up out of class one to be the champion. Congratulations to her. If you get comfortable with her just the way she moves off of her uh, front end uh, in relation to our heifer that wins, I think you can sure swap that pair. But it's a nice uh, trio of cattle here. We're going to use him to be the reserve.
Start into our Simmental Influence Show. Uh, real attractive, nice in her lines, really heads up, kind of a female. Strong down her top and some levelness out of her hip. Heaviness of structure looks good underneath this female as well. Looks like her parts and her pieces blend and match. We'll see how she uh, stacks up. That's a quality heifer with presence from the profile and still a great look about her. Nice female, congratulations to her. up and robust in terms of her body design and her spread like the dimension that this heifer has upper rib shape and rib cage is good heifer can balance up pretty well from the profile you might want to loosen her up just a little bit off of that front end in terms of the way that knee and shoulder uh, work together but i think she's adequate enough in that regard like the spring rib and the volume that this heifer shows us a quality female congrats Just the two heifers here, and you got the real clean, pretty heifer that came out of class one uh, that certainly has a good look about her. And you got a big, stout, beefy heifer there out of class two that you really like the spring of rib and the volume that she's got to her. You could pick on each one of them in a spot or two, but I think as you start to melt them down, the one that puts the most positives together is the older heifer. She's going to be our champion. Young ladies, fall heifer calf is going to be reserved. Nice pair of females for these young ladies. each other and again they came out of uh, 
very respective classes and divisions here. And the, and the heifer that suits me the best, though, I think just in terms of having that extra mass and power, substance, and still an adequate running gear, I like the influence heifer here to be our champion. Congratulations to her. maybe lead quite as well but I don't think there's anything wrong with her structurally she's a quality heifer and I think it's a nice pair of cattle but uh, I'm going to keep those influences together I thought they were fairly close I still do this heifer is going to be our reserve congratulations to you good job Interesting trio here in this class and some differences I think in type and kind and you get that a little more in a commercial show 
the chocolate heifer we used to lead off the class. I think offers us the most uh, positives from a boldness perspective. She's got some spring of rib and some volume to her. Probably pro all the more condition that she needs at this stage of the game, but I think unrivaled in terms of being opened up in her skeleton, having some width the base and some substance as you study her all the way through. I would relax her in her top line maybe just a little bit, uh, but I think the heifer's flexible enough as she goes. The black heifer's got a nice look and outline and pattern, a little tidier up through her head and her neck and her chest, a little emptier middle, a little flatter in her rib design in relation to the heifer we have that leads off the class. The white heifer's bold centered. I like her softness of flank, a little rounder out of her hip and wants to fall out of balance when you set the cattle in motion. Her flexibility is good. She just gets a little steeper out of her hip, a little weaker right in behind her shoulder. Well balanced kind of a female. Certainly like the look and the eye appeal that she has and still some stoutness as you take her to the ground. She's one that's certainly got enough boldness and dimension to her and just the balance and presence that she has as a quality heifer to win the class. I like the young man's heifer in second as well. Really upheaded, really nice in terms of her look from the profile. Not as much substance as the heifer we had that leads off the class, but still a lot of presence to this heifer. Really well balanced and very attractive in her design. Heifer that comes in thirds, a cowie kind of a female. It's got some rib and some volume. Maybe not some of the extras as you look at her from the side as our top two cattle have, but still a useful kind of a female. Body type is good. I bet that young lady wishes that heifer had a little different attitude, but that's a solid female.
time for an effort here in our commercial game. Uh, so I think it's pretty easy. Uh, Little stout featured female certainly has a quality look from the side. She's going to be our champion. Congratulations to her.
Let's put our hands together for our heifer exhibitors, uh, if you would. Uh, very good show. I've had the opportunity to do a lot of judging, and uh, you know, again, I still like coming to the county fair level. Uh, uh, you know, if somebody asked me, well, yeah, I'm going to uh, Mercer County, Illinois, to judge on Thursday the cattle show, and somebody asked me, they said, why do you like to still do county fairs? Uh, because this is where we all started, you know, no matter what you, if you have 10 national champions or you win Louisville or whatever the case is, we all started at the county fair and, uh, you know, there's nothing like a good county uh, to kind of get everybody's blood pumping and everybody wants to beat their neighbors and I understand how all that works and uh, there's nothing get wrong with a little competition and, uh, you know, so to me the county fair level, uh, that, that's where we all kind of got our start and, you uh, Still one of the, I told Brecken this, you know, she said, what are we going to take to the county fair here in a couple of weeks? I said, we're going to take the very best we have because uh, I think it's an important place to showcase uh, uh, your, your best animals. Uh, the county fair is, uh, is a place that's pretty sacred. Uh, you know, since we moved back to Illinois a couple of years ago, we don't live in the county that I grew up in. And, uh, you know, still we have some shows there every year. And I always tell, tell my family, it's still a special place, your county fairgrounds is always going to hold a lot of value to you. So the, the cattle show has been very good. We had a lot of single entry classes, a lot of, of uh, you know, two, three head breeds, but that's fine. We tried to talk about them and just show you, the, share you my opinion. I do like the fact you're going to do a top five. I think that allows you to get uh, more people recognized, more kids recognized. And, uh, you know, it's been very competitive up on the top end. So I wish you all the best of luck. I know we still got some steers to work through. Uh, I think it's been a very quality heifer lineup. I'm going to go show you the five that I like best, but again, let's give them all a good hand, please. What about the third, fourth, I don't know. You just go sit down and I'll pick them so you don't, no, yeah, so you don't go run over. Here, take that back to the stand. Congratulations. Good job. You can just pull her right up there in the corner. You know. Pull her down here, buddy. Pull her down here. Should be a reserve. Yeah. Good job. We'll just, we'll just kind of pull them up over there. Pull them up over there. Just pull her up here. Pull her up there.
Second, red calf third, it'd be fourth, buddy.
Nice way to start off our feeder steer show. The young lady here is going to lead off the class. Young lady going to lead off the class. I think this is the best balanced calf we've got in the group. He proportions the best and yet I think we've got a top pair of cattle that maybe have just a little more spread and shape to them. With that I think this one hooks up a little better in his top line. He hooks up a little better out through his hip. This calf may be a little stouter bone. I probably like the way he moves a little better even in the calf we have that leads off the class. He wants to flatten right in behind his shoulder and gets a little off from hooks to pins in relation to the class winner. The red calf are coming third is really a nice pattern steer. Needs a little more width down at his hock, down at the ground, up at his pins. He wants to get a little sharper up over the top uh, than the top two steers. Then the calf that closes, deep bodied steer that's got some practicality, just runs out of gas as you get up on top of him. Uh, might want to trim him up just a notch there in his lower body line as well. Another nice class of these uh, dairy feeder steers here. Young lady's calf that leads off the class, really balances up well from the side. A calf that's got some substance to him as well. I think he's one of the two shapelier steers we got in the group, but his body line balance is a little better in his relationship from his forerib to his flank. He patterns up well. I want to change him in his left knee there just a little bit, but I think that gets critical of a calf that probably wins the class with relative ease in my opinion. I like the calf in second as well. He's nice up through his front end. He's got some genuine shape down his top. He too will maybe want to set him back in his shoulder and his knee just a little bit. Doesn't have the forerib and flanking and we find the calf that leads off the class. Good pattern to the young man's steer. Hooks forward. I like him. I want to raise him up in his pins and spread him apart just a bit. I thought he had just a little nicer balance and look to him though than our calf that closes. 
predominantly black steers, a little more extended from the profile, I like his length of body. We need to gauge him a little wider off either end of his framework if he's going to get up uh, around those other steers within the class. He's, that's too bad. Uh, he's, uh, we don't get to see him in the regular show. He's a good solid steer. Got some bulk and some mass to him. Uh, really like the color pattern. He's kind of a striking look to him. Uh, but uh, unfortunately, we don't get to recognize him within our, uh, our regular feeder calf show as he was overweight. But a good solid steer. Nice project for the young man. I bet he'll continue to keep him going and a uh, nice kind of a calf. So let's give him a good hand. Uh, even though he doesn't get to come back, that's a good solid steer. but a nice pair of cattle the calf that won class one uh, really balances well he's got some natural spread and shape we talked about might want to tweak him on his hind leg just a notch but still useful kind of a calf and the steer that wins class two sort of like the balance the proportionality and the silhouette that he gives you climb in behind him he's got some width and some dimension to him a calf that i think fits together nice from the side as well he's going to be our champion the secure out of class two congratulations this young lady and the steer out of class one. I'm going to keep those two together out of that second class. I think this one just fits together a little better in terms of his profile, a little more clearance at his hock, a little stouter structured as well. We're going to keep those two calves together. Second place will be our reserve.
Peter Tim show a nice deer to lead off with. One was very powerful and sound in terms of his construction. It just kind of powers himself right to the top. Probably a little closer placing between the two baldy heifers here. Uh, I think just a little more to this one that goes in second. A little more natural rib shape and volume. Maybe not the extra stoutness we find in the steer that leads off the class. Like the skeletal design of the heifer that goes in third, she just needs to be pried apart off either end of her framework, stouten her up in her bone work just a bit to run with those top two cows.
You have to lead off the class. He really hooks up nice from the profile. He's got some stoutness to him as well. One that I think just in terms of uh, presence from the side along with his uh, functionality at the ground needs to find himself to the forefront of the class. There might be more extras in the blue roam calf in terms of bone and feature and substance. Didn't read him being quite as good at the ground in terms of his skeletal makeup. Doesn't have quite the balance and symmetry that we find in the calf that leads off the class. Nice pair of steers though. Calf in third's got a little attitude, but he's a nice made steer. Need to hook him up a little differently down into his base. Wants to get a little sharper in the set of his hock, but I thought he balanced up better than our two heifers that closed the class. A little bigger navel heifer to come in four, but she's got more bulk and density to her and the heifer that closed the class. We need to compose her a little differently on her rear leg. Red heifer's got a nice look. She balances well. Need to bolden her up and power up all the way through if she's going to compete with some of the cattle off the line.
Another interesting class here in our feeder show, the uh, white-footed heifer that leads off the class, I think puts the most good things together from a balance perspective, still having enough muscle and spread and dimension, but just a quality presence from the side. I think her uh, class leading advantages are further highlighted when you set the cattle in motion. She's the most flexible as you ask her to go off both ends. Muscular calf to come in second, has some shape down his top, a little coarser at the lower part of his shoulder, a little more snug in his forerib and back into his flank in relation to the heifer that leads off. That was a close placing between second and third because this Hereford calf balances a little nicer than the steer in second. Just doesn't have quite enough lead in his pencil to probably get around that steer in terms of natural shape and spread up high. But a close placing between second and third. Black calf's loose structured and got a nice look to him. Just needs a few extras to compete. Big red calf to close the class. Sound structured, loose made kind of a calf. Just needs more meat animal shape as you get up on top of him for him to compete with the others in the class. Got some shape down his top, out of his hip. Stout featured calf as well. We talked about it. Might want to carve some of that lower shoulder out of him. He's a little tighter in his heart, but I do think he gets in the mix just because of the natural spread and power that he has. The little calf out of class one's a stout featured rascal as well. One that's got a lot of shape. He's pretty young yet and juvenile, so uh, he wants to break a little behind his shoulder. A real well patterned calf out of class two. Got a nice look to him. Is there enough substance in him? So I don't know uh, where you want to land on these, but I'm going to keep those two out of together out of that third class. That calf's going to be our reserve champion. Congratulations. <laughs>
Quite a bit of variation in type and kind here in our dairy uh, steer class. Uh, 
Man steer that leads off, I think, just in terms of uniformity and balance, has the most correct look to him. Uh, when you get your hands on him a little further along in his degree of finish, a calf that's got some shape up high, he's just to me the most correct steer as you study him from the profile. Could you extend him a little bit up out of his front end? You probably could, but in terms of soundness, appropriate frame size, and still having some finish to him, he's the steer I like the best. A little bigger frame steer to come in second. He's got a nice pattern to him. Now he doesn't have, he's not quite as far along in his degree of finish. As we go to heavier weights, he's a little emptier over his final ribs. Probably just a little more concerning from that regard. I'd like to tone him down just a notch in his frame size. But he's got some natural spread, some natural balance to him in relation to the calf that comes in third. So well-fed, well-presented steer, just needs more muscle. He's a little flatter up over his edges in relation to the top two steers, a little more fragile as you take him to the ground. A good fed steer that's uh, got some doability to him. Need to fix him on his hind legs, the one that comes in fourth. Clean him up in his joints, just make him a little more comfortable off of his rear skeleton. A nice balanced calf to close the class who simply just needs more muscle. Closes up the most to any of them in terms of his quarter and his stifle, down his top and out of his hip. We just need to spread him apart. But a nice pattern, nice outline steer who is a little more flexible than the calf that goes right ahead of me. Interesting trio of Angus steers here, and to be forthright with you, I think you could justify placing these a lot of different ways depending on where you want to lay your priorities. 
To me, the calf that has the most genuine shape is the steer that we start with. When you get your hands on him, he's got the boldest, most aggressive turn over his loin edge and back out of his hip. I think all of them are plenty good in terms of the amount of finish that they have. He could hook up a little nicer in terms of balance, but I think in terms of red meat yield, having some extra stoutness and some power to him and being probably the highest cutability steer we've got in the group, he's the one that we're going to land on. Steers in second and third both can be powered up just a notch. They're both well-finished steers. Uh, they're consistent in terms of their touch. I thought this one balanced up a little nicer than our steer that comes in third. He needs a little more substance and strength to run with the calf that leads off the class. Steer in third is a high quality uh, incentive kind of a steer in terms of being choice favorable when you get him onto the grid. He's a little tighter in terms of his movement, probably from an aesthetic standpoint, gives up the most look of any of the three steers in the class. He doesn't have quite as much muscle to counter the extra finish that he has, probably poses the greatest cutability concern. But an interesting trio of Angus steers here to start off. Not right at 900 and something like that. Uh, calf that's starting to put on some finish like he needs to at this uh, weight and maturity. A nice look to this calf. Pretty good running gear underneath of him. Obviously, he's quite a bit ways from his marketable endpoint, but a steer that you certainly like in terms of his strength the top and the levelness he has out of his hip. Quality calf for the young man here to be our champion belt in Galloway. Congratulations. Single entry here in the Charlay Steer Show, but a nice calf, one that's got some muscle and some spread, some bulk as you study him all the way through. Big forearm in this calf. Handles himself, I think, adequate when you ask him to get out and go. A steer that poses a nice tandem of both quality and yield grade, appropriate in the amount of finish, and uh, uh, that he maintains that over his final ribs as well. Big back in that calf, a big engine in him as well. We'll see how he stacks up as we get him back out here, but a good look to him. Nice calf here to represent the Charlays. Keys.
think a close placing on these top two steers in this class. He can peel him around, uh, then we'll put that black and white one behind him, buddy. I, I think each of them have a place or two you can nitpick on, and depending on where you want to lay your priority. Uh, the steer that wins the class, to me, paints the best picture from the side. He's a little more adequate in terms of his structure off of his front end in relation to the steer that comes in third. I like the way he drops out of his shoulder and his elbow a little truer to the ground. I think he's got a little more flex and freedom. Now, he doesn't have as much muscle. I call him adequate in that regard. He doesn't have as much top shape or base width as the steer that comes in second. I think you get a little neater package there. I think you get a little more balance, a little more symmetry in that skunk-tailed steer to lead off the class. Now, you put this one's rib cage and this one's top side dimension on that calf's running gear, and then I think we can talk because this one is so good standing still in terms of his body shape, the upper spread to his pins, right out of the back side of his shoulder. He's a man uh, in this particular class. I don't get comfortable with the way he prances off of his front end. He sets a little wider up in his shoulder. He wants to set just a little uncomfortable off of his front skeleton, and then he wants to kind of goose step a little bit behind. If you call it good enough, I think you can switch that pair. I went for a little more balance and IP, a little more structural integrity with enough muscle in the cap that leads off the class. This one might be as impressive upside down as any of them in the class. In terms of top shape, in terms of his finish that he has, he's going to have a really good tandem of both quality and yield grade. He's a little duller from the profile. He doesn't have some of the extra bells and whistles from the side we find in those two calves that precede him in the class. That's a good steer. Very fundamentally correct. Has some muscle, has some finish, has some quality to him. Uh, he just doesn't have some of those extras as you study him in relation to the top pair of cattle. Good trio of steers close placing up top.
in here in, a, in our main division. Uh, the calf that leads off really gives you a nice silhouette from the side. He's really strong up through his front end. And he's a little better in his top line on the move and probably motors a little better than the calf in second. He's sure ample in the amount of thickness that he has when you get him behind him. Still bold enough in his top design and a calf that's still pretty appropriate in the way that he handles from a finish perspective as well. Calf in second is further along in his degree of finish. And again, I think we'll probably better exploit the quality side of the grid in relation to uh, the intermuscular fat that he'll probably expose just in terms of the way that he handles. He's a good middle steer, got an easy feed and look about him. A little chunkier up through his front end, a calf that wants to get a little different in the way he handles his top line when you set him in motion. I'd like to just loosen him up a pinch uh, as well. Doesn't have quite the balance and symmetry to his line as what we find in the steer that wins. Got to fix those rear feet as well, pump them up just a bit. The calf that comes here uh, in third, uh, one that probably has as high cutability as any steer we've got in the class. From a, a yield grade perspective, you're very favorable this calf. He's got some natural muscle, he's got some natural spread. He's a little coarser in his joint work, a little emptier middle kind of a steer. He simply doesn't have quite enough finish uh, to him at this stage of the game. He's a little emptier over his final ribs. We like to just bulk him up a bit. But I like the calf's muscle, I like his cutability. I just need to clean up his joints and rework his lower body line just a notch. But three very good steers and very interesting to put together. Just one short horn steer here in this class, but very muscular and shapely and uh, nice dimension out of the backside of his shoulder and the way he feeds into his top line. I like this calf, the way he hooks up in the side from a balance perspective. Set him in motion, he wants to get just a little tense off of his rear leg. Uh, maybe he'll settle in when we get some other cattle out here. He's maybe just a little choppier in terms of his movement. But when she gets him put together, he's upheaded. He's nice and proud about his front end. I like the dimension down his top. Hooked up right in his underpinning from a muscularity perspective. Just need to get a read on his skeleton. We'll, we'll, I'll wait to reserve judgment on that till we get a couple other cattle maybe in the ring with him. But nice kind of a steer. It's got a good look. See how he motors, but a good calf.
Interesting pair of cattle here in our Shorthorn Plus show. The, the black steer to me, uh, if you just put, total them up in terms of weighing positives, I think has a bit more to offer. In terms of his flank line, his lower body cavity, when you get your hands on the steers, he's a little more appropriate in the amount of finish that he has. He's a little mellower to the touch, a little softer in terms of his body style. He could be tweaked on his rear leg, uh, so could the calf that comes in second. So I think you kind of have a little bit of a catch-22 here. To me, he balances a little better from the profile, and he's a little softer in his flank. This calf, no doubt, has more muscle, more back shape, but again, is going to be a little more impressive in terms of the cutability side of the grid. I didn't read him being quite as athletic. He's a little tenser off his rear leg. He's one that doesn't have quite as much finish as well. So I think you could go either way. If you want to use the bigger back, more muscular steer, you can use him. I thought he was a little stiltier off both ends. I thought this calf was a little mellower to the touch, a little softer bodied, but you could sure switch that pair and I wouldn't have a lot of debate with you. Those are two good calves, just kind of hard to wrap your mind around which one you want to uh, tweak uh, uh, a little less than the other. I use the calf that to me is a little softer, a little further along in this degree of finish. Plus here, two good steers. Uh, as we get them out here though, I think the shorthorn steer kind of overpowers the other one in terms of width from stifle to stifle. He's a bigger forearm calf. It's just broader and denser all the way through. Probably could nitpick on his skeleton up front and behind just a notch, but it's not going to be enough to deny him in this uh, particular class and grouping. He's going to be our champion and we'll follow up since he was a single entry with the plus steer to be the reserve. Congratulations.
Nice trio of Simmental steers here. A good calf to lead off with. Uh, one that's really balanced and progressive as you study him from end to end. He's got some boldness to his rib cage, some power down his top and out of his hip, and very appropriate in the amount of finish that he has. Still travels with some comfort off both ends of his skeleton as well. Uh, but a calf that just fits together nice from the side. Just uh, one that I think in terms of form to function has the most quality in this particular group. Calf in second. Uh, if you're selling them by the pound in the sale, that's the one that I want uh, to sell because he is large. Uh, I think she said uh, hugging 1,600, 1,590 something, I think. But you know, he's not all, in terms of the realm of where we're harvesting cattle at in the real world today, you know, they're harvesting them in the 15 to mid 15. So that calf's got finish, he's got balance, he's still, he's been, he's a well presented steer. Probably got maybe a little more frame and weight than what we would want in the show ring, but still, he's a good doing, practical kind of a steer. Might want to tone him down there just a notch in relation to the class winner, but still a nice kind of a calf. The blue roan that comes out in third is a nice bodied steer. Pretty mellow to the touch as well. A calf that just doesn't have quite the balance and symmetry that we find to the top two steers. But a calf that has some finish, he's going to have some cutability. Uh, from a marketability standpoint, when you get him uh, upside down, he's going to have some value. Just maybe doesn't hook up quite as nice from the side as our top two. Another pretty close call here in our lightweights. You want to just peel them around. We're going to leave them like they came in. I think the black steer is a little better in motion. I think he's a little stouter featured kind of a calf. I really call muscle a wash on these two steers. I think both of them have ample shape, ample spread. I think this one's built on a little stouter foundation. I think he's got a little more flexibility off both ends of his framework as well. This calf's probably a nickel further along in his degree of finish and for a lightweight steer. Appreciate that. He's a little... Uh, tents off either end of his framework, wants to come up a little short in his stride there from behind. I like to build him with a little more feature at the ground as well, but you want to swap that pair, you can sure do so. I just didn't read that calf moving quite as well or having quite as much bone and power as the steer we started off the class with.
the top of this class. He's got the most uh, um, muscle shape and red meat yield to be in his favor, I think, when you get the cattle onto the harvest floor. And yet with some dimension and substance, he's got a nice look and some pattern to him from the side. Still motors well off both ends of his framework and to me gets right away with the class. Steer in second, doesn't have as much to him as the calf that wins, but I think as you shape him up, he's got just a bit more spread than the calf that comes in third. I like to loosen him up just a bit on his hind leg and fill him up in his lower body, but still, solid calf. A baldy steer that comes in third probably has a little more finish than the calf that goes right ahead of him. I think he'll be a little better in terms of his quality grade incentives. He doesn't have near the muscle, though, that the two steers ahead of him have. Closes up a little more at his base, a little narrower down his top as well.
very competitive class, I think, all the way through here. Four nice steers in this group. Uh, calf that wins the class just shapes up with the most power and spread down his top. Uh, a really muscular calf. It's a little fresher to the touch uh, than the steer we have that comes right behind him. This calf's a little more uniform in terms of his handle. He feeds in a little bigger out of the back side of his shoulder. Got a nice look to him from the side. He's carved up nice in his chest. Uh, calf that I just think puts a lot of good things together. Ultra powerful and stout. Still a good look and moves adequately. Nice steer to win the class. Good calf in second. I like his doability. I like a calf that, in terms of his middle, he's a sound, loose structured steer. Probably a little better up out of his front end in terms of his shoulder design, even than the steer that wins the class. He's just a little staler to the touch. Probably not as good and right behind his shoulder and the way he feeds in or uh, quite as aggressive over the edge of his loin there, but another good steer. A lot of practicality, a lot of doability to him, like his flexibility as well. Steer that comes in thirds, a nice built calf with a good look. He just runs out of gas in relation to the top two steers in terms of shaping through his quarter and his stifle and his twist, forearm shape. He just runs out of gas in terms of spread all the way through. But a good calf, easily the best third place steer we've had thus far throughout the show today. Then just a real solid meat and potatoes kind of a steer to come in fourth. Doesn't blow you away in any one area, but he's a practical kind of a calf. In terms of body design, uh, he's a calf that's ample in the amount of muscle. He just doesn't have quite enough look. He's not quite as pleasing from the profile as those three steers we've got. That's a well-fed, well-presented steer. He just doesn't have some of the extra intangibles of the trio that beats him in the class. Good set of steers. Red steers, and we uh, comb through these three classes to get down to these three steers. And uh, as you get them back out here, it's probably not much mystery on which one I like. I think this is a very nice steer, fits together well. He's got muscle, he's got spread, a nice look, and still handles well. Our heavyweight's going to be our champion crossbred. Congratulations, Larry. <laughs> I thought that was a good group of steers. I thought particularly that top trio in that class was very, very nice. Uh, and this calf's going to follow him all the way through, buddy. You just keep walking him. He's going to be our reserve crossbred. Congratulations to you. Good set of these crossbred steers. Congratulations to these exhibitors.
Get to the market heifer class here and a good pair of them up on the top end. A heifer that wins the class uh, to me is ample in the amount of shape that she has, but she just moves a little better off either end of her framework. Skeletal design to me fits together a little better as you study her from the side. Watch her come at you. She's a little more inside of herself uh, than the heifer we have that comes in second. With that, she's appropriate in the amount of finish that she has. I think to me, just a little easier feeding kind of a look to her in relation to the one that comes in two. Big topped and big ended here in the one that comes in second. Nice up through her front end. A little ouchier when you set her in motion, just a little stiffer in terms of her movement. I'd like to just bring her shoulder into her and just make her a little more flexible off either end, but a good look to her. Still big down her top and big out of her hip. The one that comes in third's got some body to her. She's got a, the right amount of finish. We just need a little more muscle to counter that extra finish. Need to hook her up with just a little more pizzazz from the side. We don't lack muscularity or cutability in the heifer that closes the class. She's one that's got a big top, a huge hip in her, a lot of red meat yield, a little emptier middle that handles accordingly, needs a little more time on feed to maximize her endpoint value.
Stephanie's, uh, last year, they started uh, giving a memorial in, in honor of Jeff's, uh, Stephanie's dad, Jeff. And so she wants to give each one of these senior members a, a memorial in honor of the Jeff Strucker family. Go ahead and give our senior members a round of applause. Uh, but she, uh, 
I appreciate you letting her tag along with me, and uh, you know that's pretty special. We've had a, a tough couple months at home, and uh, you know, family, everything. You gotta remember that. You know, whoever wins this show in five years, we're not gonna remember. Uh, you might if you win, uh, you might if you lose, and you think I'm a, a terrible judge, or whatever the case is. But uh, you know, that is the most important thing is just to raise your kids right. I work with kids for a living. I don't have to worry about kids who grow up in a barn. I worry about the ones that show up in sweatpants 30 minutes late in class. And uh, that's not usually these kids. I got a couple of former students that are sitting down here on this end that reckon uh, they would take care of Brandon Wild and judge him. And uh, you know, the bond that we have with the students that come through any of the stops I've had, but now Blackhawk is very special. And, uh, you know, um, you're just, we're just really fortunate. When we were COVID hit, we didn't have the opportunity to maybe do as much. Uh, we kind of got shut down. We kind of took things for granted, and we're really fortunate that we get to do this uh, as an industry. So I appreciate the opportunity to judge. I try to, if I can fit in my schedule, maybe when you call, I try to get a judge because it's an honor. Whether you judge 60 head or you judge 6,000 head, I think it's an honor to be asked uh, to evaluate it. Again, I'll be honest with you, I did not know one single person who walked through the ring. And, the very, and I know a lot of people, so very often when I go to shows, uh, that always comes up. I promise you, I did not know one of these kids that came to this ring today. And not that that matters, but, you know, again, I gave you an unbiased opinion of what I like. doesn't mean that it necessarily has to be what, what you like. But I think we've got a, an industry where a little too, uh, ours is the best and everybody else's is terrible. And I think you've got to be cognizant and careful with that because, uh, you know, we're fortunate to have this industry, but outsiders may try to shut us down at some point, and we're going to have to band together. There's lots of differences. I wouldn't tell you that there was, in my opinion, just a slam dunk winner out here. I think there's a lot of good talent, but we can keep them all. So just depending on where you lay your priorities is where you're going to end up uh, as a turn to get the chance. So, again, I appreciate the committee for asking me. Uh, I appreciate uh, Roger Carr, who I think kind of put my name in as a good supporter of Black Club, who's sitting over here, a good friend of mine. Uh, but I enjoy judging. I enjoy working with the young people. I enjoy a, a day of not cleaning hog bins at home with my wife, and I hope she's got that done so I get home. I don't like to do that, but uh, thank you very much. I don't like to do that. But I appreciate you letting her come with me and tag along. It's been a great show. I love the 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 cow had differences in them, but we didn't have any cattle that were underfinished. Uh, we didn't have any cattle that weren't well taken care of. And a lot of places where I go, you see cattle that maybe don't have the nutrition level that they need or they don't have the, the finish that they need. You know, we had differences out here but these cattle were well taken care of and well presented. So for that as a county, you should be very proud. Uh, there's one student that kind of stuck out to me as they came along. I, I thought it was probably the hardest to pick a great big hole in.